Coming up tonight on YCN News, New Hampshire Governor Maggie Hassan signs into law bipartisan legislation that will cover the cost of uncompensated medical care in the state. A Hinsdale, New Hampshire man is sentenced to 25 years in federal prison after being convicted on one count of child sexual exploitation. And the Summer Music Associates treat the Lake Sunapee region to a performance of the Boston Civic Symphony. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, Southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening and welcome to this Monday edition of YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. New Hampshire Governor Maggie Hassan today signed into law bipartisan legislation that will help cover the cost of uncompensated medical care in the state. Now that Senate Bill 369 is law, the state must abide by agreement worked out with 25 of New Hampshire's 26 hospitals. The hospitals were preparing to sue the state over issues related to the Medicaid enhancement tax. Previously, hospitals received reimbursement from the state to help pay for care given residents who could not pay for it. Political circumstances changed during the last biennium and the money given back to the hospitals was no longer granted. The deal worked out over the last several months calls again for reimbursements. Protecting the state's budget and the well-being of residents is now possible with today's signing, Hassan said after signing the bill at the state house. In another healthcare story, enrollment begins tomorrow for 50,000 New Hampshire residents who are now eligible for state subsidized health insurance per the state's expansion of Medicaid earlier this year. That, too, took some legislative wrangling. In the end, lawmakers agreed to take action to cover residents who could not afford health care on their own, even under the Affordable Care Act. Eligible residents have until August 15th to complete application. This can be done online, by telephone, or on paper. Medicaid expansion plans are different than plans in the state health insurance exchange under the ACA, known as the Marketplace. Governor Maggie Hassan says the expansion benefits the state and its citizens. $2.5 billion federal dollars will come to the state to help pay for increased insurance to the state's working, poor, or neediest residents. Having a well care plan under expansion will help prevent hospitals from giving medical care that the patient cannot repay. Though school may be out for the kids as the summer break begins, the members of the staff are always hard at work through the months away from classes. The Kearsarge School District is currently reaching out and seeking new leadership in the high school. Both the principal and assistant principal positions are open at the Kearsarge High School. Today I spoke with Superintendent Jerry Fru to see how the hiring process is going. Currently, they have final interviews set up with several candidates for the assistant principal position, but they are still advertising for candidates to apply for the role of principal until July 11th. After that date, they will begin the process of interviewing those who have applied. Meanwhile, in Lebanon, SAU 88 needs to hire a new superintendent, high school principal, and district business administrator. YCN will continue to update you as news progresses in both districts and on other local school news. Senator Bernie Sanders came to Warner, New Hampshire to sign copies of his books and to hear residents' concerns. Sanders was not necessarily making a stump speech for the U.S. presidency in 2016. He has said that if no candidate comes forward who represents the issues that need to be solved, then he may enter the race. Yet at Main Street bookends in Warner, people lined up just to see and hear him. Sanders took a moment to speak with YCN News. Well, uh... The Senate is significantly dysfunctional right now. Hold on. So. Before being called away to take a phone call from the White House. One event attendee, Ernst Katzning, spoke to YCN News about what Sanders' talk today mean to him as a citizen. Folks like Senator Sanders are in the Senate. Whether they're, He doesn't represent me from either New Hampshire or Virginia, but he represents what I believe in and it's important that all people who view things the way he does, that they have somebody in Congress, whether it's the Senate or the House, to speak 
on the issues the way they feel. They don't elect that person, but in my case, I really support him and what he's trying to accomplish. It's a common sense approach, and it's unfortunate what we really need in this country, it's, and it's practically not going to happen, is to have a, a third party that's basically a common sense party, you can call it that, mm -hmm. you know, where folks like uh, Bernie or, and others can get a constituency going. But if you try that now, you're going to guarantee the Republican Party to win. Continuing with Senator Sanders, who chairs the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, President Barack Obama is nominating West Point graduate and Procter & Gamble CEO Bob McDonald to be the next Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Obama is bypassing Interim Secretary Sloan Gibson, going to see the business world to see if McDonald can turn around a struggling VA medical center system. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. A Hinsdale, New Hampshire man has been sentenced to 25 years in federal prison after being convicted on one count of child sexual exploitation. The investigation that led to the conviction of 32-year-old Benjamin Mays began in November 2012. Federal, state, and local police formed the team effort that led to Mays' arrest. Mays, federal attorneys say, had been communicating online with a person who actually was an undercover federal agent. Mays sent the sexually explicit images of children to the agent. Search warrant in hand, police seized computer items, cell phones, and images of Mays engaged in sexual conduct with a minor. Mays was arrested in December 2012. Assistant U.S. Attorney Helen White Fitzgibbon prosecuted the case. Mays was sentenced in U.S. District Court in Concord, New Hampshire. Project Safe Childhood aims to end childhood mistreatment. Go online to projectsafechildhood.net to learn more. A performing arts group in Putney, Vermont is the latest beneficiary of National Grant. The Next Stage Arts Project will receive a $379,000 grant from Art Place America, the Brattleboro Reformer reports. Competition for the award was fierce. 1,270 arts-based associations applied. Of that, only 55 applicants received grants, including Next Stage. The center is located at 15 Kimball Hill Road. Next Stage Executive Director Maria Basescu learned on Friday of the award. She told the reformer a large portion of the grant will be used to modernize its performing space in a former church. The United Church of Putney shares space with the Putney Historical Society. This past Saturday, the Summer Music Associates treated the Lake Sunapee region to a performance of the Boston Civic Symphony, a 79-piece orchestra conducted by Max Hobart and assisted by Tai Chi Fukumura. A highlight of the evening was from solo violinist, 15-year-old Ilana Zaks. We had a chance to ask her how long she has been playing. My 11-year anniversary is coming up um, July 7th and I started playing at three years old, so 11 years. Wow, I can't even remember what I was doing when I was three years old. Since 2013, she has been a member of the Perlman Music Program where she receives lessons from the legendary Eats Hawk Perlman. After her performance last Saturday of Mendelssohn's Violin Concerto in E minor, she was brought back for an encore. We asked her about that piece. It's, it's really fun because it's, 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 you could show off any, all your skills and you could just have fun and it's not like a very serious piece. And there are lots of serious things for violin orchestra and this is one of them that's not. <laughs> Sounds fun. What an appropriate piece for this 4th of July season. Let's hear a bit of that work. Pretty amazing, and she seems like a delightful young lady. YCN will televise the entire concert, which includes Mendelssohn's Hebrides Overture and Beethoven's Symphony No. 8 in F on July 9th at 7.30 and 10.30 p.m. on WYCU. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Now, Matt McDonald will have a look at our weather for the next few days and then move on to sports. Thanks, Rose. Tonight we're expecting clear skies with lows in the 60s and winds around 5 miles per hour. Tomorrow will be mostly sunny with a high of 90 degrees and winds ranging between 5 and 10 miles per hour. 
Tuesday night we have a 30% chance of showers after 3 a.m. with winds up to 10 miles per hour. Skies will be cloudy with lows in the upper 60s. Wednesday will have a 40% chance of showers with highs in the 80s. Skies will be partly sunny and winds will range between 5 and 10 miles per hour. Wednesday night we have a 30% chance of rain with cloudy skies and lows in the upper 60s. You can see here on our map that we have the clear skies into tomorrow, but expect these storms in the Ohio Valley to reach us by Tuesday night. The storms are expected to last until Friday, so we may have a rainy Independence Day. Now let's see what's coming up on our community calendar. Tomorrow in White River Junction, Vermont, the Listen Community Dinner will be held at the River Point Plaza starting at 5 p.m. In Brattleboro, the Select Board will meet at 6 p.m. Also in Vermont, Next Stage Arts in Putney, Vermont will hold an American Guitar Masters concert at 7.30 p.m. Tuesday night. Remember, you can submit local events from your community by sending them to news at ycnnow.com. Well, the New Hampshire Fisher Cats did it. They made a six-game winning streak spread out across opponents Portland and New Britain. Last Tuesday was the start of the streak in which they won against Portland 5-1. Wednesday's game was postponed, and on Thursday they won their game against New Britain 2-1 in the first round with them. On Friday, they won the regularly scheduled game 3-2 and also won the makeup game against New Britain 8-0. On Saturday, they took on New Britain again and won with a final score of 6-2. And finally, they won again 3-2. Tonight, the Fisher Cats will play a game with Redding. How long will they keep their streak?